I'm in my craft room and these are all the pieces that I've pulled out of my decor cupboard. This is all stuff that is going to be leaving my house and we're going to be giving some of this stuff a makeover uh, in order to make it a little bit more appealing uh, and to sell online. This glass one, I'm not sure what to do with. I'm not sure. I'm definitely getting rid of it. I don't have a place for it in my house. I just don't know whether I should just, just sell it as a glass bowl or give it a makeover and paint it. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I might do? I might list it as is and if it doesn't sell then I'll give it a makeover. That might be the best of both worlds then. So for the majority I'm going to just start by giving them a coat of white chalk paint because white chalk paint's always a good base to start with. It will allow anything else that you want to paint on top to stick a lot better as well. So that's what we're going to do. Some of them need a little bit of a clean out like this one, this one, that one in there. So I'm going to give them all a, a good clean first. I've got to get all the, this candle wax in the bottom of those ones. So I'm going to give them all a good clean first and then we are going to give them one coat of white chalk paint, let them dry and then uh, we'll do some makeovers with them after that. I'm going for probably like a French country farmhouse vibe to a lot of these. So it's going to be that white French country look to them. That sort of look tends to sell quite quickly as well. So yeah, let's get started. All right, so we're gonna start, I'm just sanding off these little tin buckets here. They had some glue on the front of them. So I'm just sanding that off first. And I found an old batch of, I think this mix is like chalk paint with some baking soda mixed in it. So I'm gonna use this little batch that I've had in my stash for a while. I'm going to use this up first and give all of these pieces a base coat using this. And I thought this would give some nice texture as well to the pieces. Uh, we are going to go over them with some proper chalk paint once this dries. But um, as you can see, it's quite grainy. And I just, I thought that might give some interesting uh, texture to the pieces. So I thought we'll use all this up first. And then I can just chuck the container away and then um, we'll make a fresh batch of chalk paint. I'll show you how to do that and we'll continue coating these until they're all covered. And I'm already loving this piece <laughs> as it is, just covering it with some of this grainy um, baking soda paint mix. I just, I think this one's going to turn out really, really good. It's amazing just what a, a bit of paint can do to a piece. So this is all the pieces now with their first layer of that grainy uh, baking soda mix and you can see it's brought out or it's actually added a lot of texture especially to these little candle holders as well. I think these are going to turn out really nice and yeah one we've got to let this dry at least overnight so that it dries hard and then we can add um, we can go over it again with some chalk paint and I'll show you how to make that chalk paint now. So I've got my one third cup of plaster of Paris in my Chinese container. I'm just gonna add some water and I'll... Okay, so I've got my mix here, just giving it a good mix. Just make sure you get all the lumps out so it's nice and smooth and not lumpy. Do not add your plaster of Paris to the paint and then add your water to the paint. Definitely don't do it that way. Do it this way where you mix your plaster of Paris first and then add your paint. Because if you add your plaster of Paris to the paint, you're just gonna get big lumps. It doesn't sort of um, blend smoothly. It's not gonna be a thick paste 
while it's like this, but it will thicken up the paint. Kind of like cornstarch, you know, when you mix cornstarch and water and when you add it to um, a sauce or something like that, it thickens it up. That's kind of the same principle. Now for the paint, I just like to use white. So I've just got the cheapest ceiling paint. I do normally use wall paint. Uh, I find it's a little bit better than ceiling paint. I think the wall paints are a bit more pigmented and a bit thicker, whereas the ceiling paints I think are a little bit thinner. So yeah, once this one's used up, I think I'm just gonna go back to just a regular wall paint. But we just wanted something quick and easy. So give this a good mix. Always hold the lid of your paint when you're shaking it because yeah, I've seen disasters where the lid just flies off. And then I just get Get a one one cup scoop. The the ratio of plaster of Paris and water is pretty important. It's got to be even, like you know, the same quantity. But if you add a bit more paint or anything like that, it's not going to matter. Okay, and then just give this a good mix now. And don't worry if the color of the plaster of Paris is like a grey tone. By the time you mix your white all the way through, it'll be fine. And then see, I don't know if you can see that, but. See how it's thickened up the paint quite a bit? You can see there, it's all still nice and white and thickening up nicely. So that then will just stick to everything. <laughs> and I'm gonna coat the rest of this stuff now in this nice smooth mix of chalk paint. So it's the next day, all of these pieces have dried now and we're gonna use our freshly made batch of chalk paint to cover all of these up. So I think I ended up doing two coats of chalk paint over um, most of these pieces and yeah that was enough to sufficiently cover cover them. And you can see here doing this one um, all the texture that's coming out on to that piece as well by using the baking soda underneath. I actually quite like that. I mean obviously if you want a smoother look then <laughs> don't use like a grainy baking soda mix. If you just use the chalk paint it'll be a nice smooth mix as well. So the candle holders and the um, pot in the back there, they're going to get a paint technique on them to give them like a, um, a vintage aged look. Uh, so I'm not going too like precise with the chalk paint on here. I'm mainly just putting the chalk paint on um, as a bit of a base so that the rest of the paint will stick to these pieces. Same with this pot here. We're going to do um, like a, a paint technique over this to make it look like antique -y. So that's why I'm not coating it completely in the chalk paint. These buckets, uh, they're going to be like a set of three. And yeah, the, the tins at the back I'm going to sell as a set of three and these little tins here, I've got three of them, they're going to be sold as a set of three as well. Uh, this piece here, again, I'm just coating it completely so that we can then add some decoration to it afterwards. <laughs> So for these few pieces here, I'm just going in now with some darker brown paint and just speckling it on here and there just to create some undertones to this. We are going to go over the top of it again in some white, but I just want to create some depth underneath the layers. Uh, so I'm just going in with some darker browns and um, beige kind of paints just to add some different colours and different textures underneath. Mm -hmm. 
same thing with this jug. I'm just going in, speckling on different coloured browns, few types of greys, just some different colours to give it some depth underneath when we put, because we are going to put another layer of chalk paint over the top of this, white chalk paint. So I just wanted to create some depth underneath the layers first. And now I'm just going over the jug in just those areas where you would tend to find it, like collect dirt and, and grime and that sort of thing. I'm just going over that in some really dark paint, very, very dark brown, almost black, and just highlighting some areas um, in the crevices and creases and along the handle where you would find it would normally get a little bit dirtier uh, just with general use if you were to use this over time and again same things for these little candle holders I'm just going in with a darker paint now trying to get into the actual crevices so that when we do put the white paint over the top of this again those dark crevices will still sort of show through a little bit and you know give the little uh, candle holder a bit more a bit more depth so now I'm going in with a paper towel and some of that chalk paint again and we're just going to dab it on randomly over the vase. So we don't want to cover it completely, we still want those darker uh, shades coming through but we want, I, I mean you could personally just leave it as it was prior but I just wanted to mute it down a little bit so I'm going over it with some white chalk paint again and just dabbing it on with a paper towel and you can see the sort of the look is you know a little bit toned down I really I'm actually really loving the way this vase is turning out or the jug is turning out so I may end up keeping this one and then just replacing it with one that I, I want to get rid of um, so yeah this may actually stay with me <laughs> I'm really happy with the way it's turning out and then with the candle holders I just went in with a shabby paintbrush and again just roughly dabbing on some of the white paint just to tone it down but not enough to cover the whole thing so here's the first set of projects all finished with their new paint job I'm absolutely loving this large vase jug and I think that's going to stay in my house and I'll just replace it, <laughs> replace one of my other vases with this one I think. I absolutely love it. I'm also really, really liking the candlesticks. Oh, I don't know if I should keep those as well. I like them. Well, look, if I do want to keep any of this stuff, then I need to get rid of stuff to replace it with. So that's going to be the deal. And even that pot, I actually am really happy with the way that's all turned out. So, yeah, I'm super, super happy with these. And like I said, guys, that is a, such a quick and easy fix to some pretty dowdy looking decor. <laughs> Yeah, I really like that stone. Well, now that it looks like it's a stone vase, it's just ceramic before. The candle holders. Okay, so that's the first lot. Let's have a look at the second lot. For the tin buckets and the tin containers, what we're going to do is print off some images onto some tissue paper and we're just going to Mod Podge them or glue them straight onto the container. So what I've got here is some tissue paper that I've just stuck with some sticky tape onto some regular printer paper. Uh, this is just to hold it in place so it doesn't jam in your printer. So I've picked out some images here that I want to use and we're just going to basically print these images out onto some printer paper and then glue them straight onto the tin buckets. So what I normally do is uh, just to make sure I've got the correct size and everything and I'm not wasting the tissue paper, I'll just print out a sample onto some regular printer paper, make sure the sizing's all good and then if that's all good run the tissue paper one through the printer. So yeah, these are the images that I've sort of picked out for each of the pieces. We've got a couple of the little crock jars. I've got three different ones for the metal tins 
and then I've got a couple of uh, bee themed ones for the little round tins as well. So most of the images that I used are, is from graphicsfairy.com. If you go on there, um, oh, there's just a multitude of images you can choose from. Um, just type in what you're looking for and heaps of options will come up. Now it's just a matter of tearing off your image, off your computer paper, just carefully. Um, you can either cut it or tear it. Sometimes if you dab a little bit of water on a paintbrush around the edges of your image, it will the paper will tear away a lot easier than the way I'm doing it here, but this worked fine as well. And um, you want to try and tear your image or, you know, cut around your image close to it so it doesn't have a lot of overhang. That way, you know, it will look a lot sort of smoother. You can streamline it a lot smoother onto your um, bucket or onto your container. And I'm just using regular PVA glue to glue these on. I put the glue onto the container itself and then just carefully press the... Um, the image onto your onto your container and I like to just use the paintbrush like the wet paintbrush that's already got glue on it just to help smooth out any wrinkles okay so here's the second lot of projects those little tins with the tissue paper transfer I'm pretty happy with the way these have turned out they definitely look a lot better than they did before so yeah they're definitely gonna go up for sale on marketplace I'll probably sell these for maybe $25 for the set so we're doing the same tissue paper technique to our next lot of projects this is so quick and so easy and I just think it just really transforms a piece from blah to, you know, a little bit wow. <laughs> and I love these little faux croc containers as well, the little marmalade ones. So if you can't find any here in Australia, you can just make your own using some um, old candle holders. So here's the next lot. We've got the milk can with the pure cream transfer on. I just sanded all the edges to give it a more rustic feel, um, just to make some of that silver shine through. And I think it just sort of brought out a little bit more detail on it than just plain white. I really like the way that's turned out. And the two little marmalade pots those would be good for just like faux plant holders they they used to be candle they used to actually be candles but we finished the candles off and now they can just be like yeah little faux plant holders or you know put your teaspoons in something like that so yeah i think they've turned out pretty cute another couple of projects finished now for these little tins i decided to glue a little piece of burlap onto them first and then glue the image of the bee on top of that and I just find that the little burlap uh, material behind it kind of mimics a little bit like the beehive with the woven I don't know <laughs> it just it just seemed to go for me it just seemed to sort of match in so uh, I thought I'll use that and it kind of has that beehive kind of look to the the burlap and yeah, just make sure you give it a really good coat of Mod Podge or uh, PVA glue on top of your um, image that you're sticking on as well. Here's the next little set. This was the three set of three little tin pots and we did those in the B theme. And again, I've just put a little bit of burlap on the back and then just 
stuck the images to that as well. And you can use them for anything. You can put pencils in them, cutlery, teaspoons, straws, faux plants, whatever you like. So this was the final makeover, the little jug and wash bowl. I again just used the tissue paper technique to stick on this image on the front and this one was done. Well I hope you've enjoyed this video guys. I hope it's given you some ideas on how you can transform some of your own pieces to make them fit your decor a little bit better. And, you know, if you can't buy it, DIY it. <laughs> Especially these little marmalade pots. I really love the look of them and they're definitely not readily available here in Australia. So if you're wanting a set of your own, you can see how easy it is just to make your own ones. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys, and I will see you in my next one. Thanks for watching.